series up and the Blazers just came out on fire. CJ McCollum finds Norman Powell in the corner for three. And then fast forward to the fourth quarter, McCollum again to Powell. This game just was out of hand quickly. Uh, Powell led the Blazers in scoring with 29 points, four, four from three. Blazers beat the Nuggets 115-95. Series tied at two, game five in Denver on Tuesday. Dane finished with just 10 points, one of 10 from the floor, and still a blowout for Portland. Jokic team high, uh, 32 in the game, finished with 16 points, minus 32 in the game, rather, 16 points and one assist. Um, so Michael Malone not happy <laughs> in this game. And that Michael just rolls off the tongue, our friend Doug Kazarian. Uh, tweeted this out. I'm thoroughly enjoying the playoff development of announcers now petrified to refer to uh, Michael Malone and Mike. I did the world a solid, he says. But I, look, I think Michael did himself a solid. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of he took some heat for for correcting me on there. I adore Michael Malone. I'm sorry I didn't know that he preferred Mike. But now the whole world knows that he prefers Michael L- Malone. You know, I don't like to be called Cassie. So you know. I'm telling people on hoop streams, if you see me in the street, don't call me Cassie, okay? Because then there'll be some problems. I will correct you. Um, so all good. Perked up. I know you got your big brother protection face on. I'm good. We're, we're good. Yeah, but I, I just don't get it, right? It's, I mean, you know, majority of the time, look, it's an honor to have the word Michael, period, right? Michael Jordan, <laughs> Michael Jack. But we all call them Mike. What makes Coach Malone any different? He should. Like, I mean, should enjoy he said it. his like, mama named his mama named him Michael. Yeah. So you know, people want to call. Yeah, he wants I'm, people to call I'm him Michael. Saying, like when I'm trying to when I'm trying to tweet about the Nuggets and put his name in there, he taking up too many characters. It's extra characters. <laughs> no reason. Like just let me call you Mike. Mike Malone. Come on, Coach. Like don't be I so sis. I'm a habitual name shortener, so I get it. But um, Michael, you know, <laughs> did just spoke to the media, and he had some strong words for his players. He called them tentative and soft in the blowout. Ooh. So, Jacoby, um, you know, what do you think about this performance by, by Denver today? There's only going to be a few series that go seven games, and I think this is one of them. Like, this is mm. an even Matt series, and they really miss Jamal Murray. As much as I love my guy, Facundo Campazzo, I love Campazzo <laughs> so much, but he can't guard <laughs> Dame Lillard. He cannot guard Dame Lillard. Who like, he, he's good for a couple highlights a game, but he can't guard Dame Lillard. I think this series, the Nick series, are both going seven games, and I don't know who to pick in this one. Perk. Well, well, listen, the Knicks game, the Knicks series is not going seven. Okay, I'm sorry to tell you that, uh, Jay, you my brother, but it's going six. The Hawks will win in six. But listen, past that, the Blazers really should be winning this series in good fashion. Without Jamal Murray, the Blazers have too much talent. They are deep. Norman Powell, C.J. McCullen, Damian Lillard, uh, Nurkic, he finally came to play today. And look, Mike Malone was right. I was sitting up there watching the game. Mike? He had to sub. He had to <laughs> sub Mike Porter Jr. out because Norman Powell had him in hell today. Like he was abusing him to the point where he had to put him on the bench. And I know Jokic is good, and I get that he probably is going to win MVP. But if you look at the personnel, the, they're not evenly matched. And I don't think this series is supposed to go seven, although I got Portland winning in seven. But after watching them play, this this should be the score every single night for Portland. They should be blowing Denver out of the water without having Jamal Murray. They should. Hmm. Well, they, we'll see. I mean, look, they need more from Michael Porter Jr. Uh, they, if they, Austin Rivers has been a surprise, but he needs to be more consistent for them, and that's to your point that they need Jamal Murray. Uh, it's time now okay. for, for tonight's On the Road, brought to you by Hotel. No one can stop this man from scoring the basketball. There is no defense for what he does. Three-pointers, mid-range, layups. He does everything you want, He did, and you can't double him either because he'll read that defense. There is nothing that can stop Luka Doncic. He just needs more help in order for them to be a true championship contender. He also has to, I think, have a little more composure, too. I think he's 
you know, I am Pat Bev is a, is an is an annoying guy to play against. Um, but you know, he also has to keep a calm head at times as well. I, I've had a front row seat to Trey Young. Um, it's hard not to be impressed with how he's been showing up for the for his first playoffs. I actually spoke to him yesterday, and he revealed what's motivating him this postseason. You told me pregame that you're locked in to disproving the narrative that you guys can't win. What do you think you guys proved in this game tonight? Um, just a little bit more. We ain't we ain't proved nothing yet. We we still haven't won the series. We still got a long ways to go. Um, we got two more to win, and we just gotta stay locked in, like I said, and, uh, and finish it off. Yeah, I mean, he told me that like he he's heard this narrative, and that's something that's really motivating him is to to make people know that he's he he can be a winner. Um, he fed off the chance at MSG, even called them compliments. Um, meanwhile, Julius Randle. He also got some chance last night at a State Farm Arena. He heard the overrated chance. Jacoby, I, I know this. I know you're a big time Knicks fan. So um, <laughs> open up your open up your bleeding heart. What do you What do you feel New York about Julius? Down. <laughs> New Julius York Randall stand right down. Now. It is terrifying going against Trey Young. He is so scary. He can score baskets so quickly. In one minute, he can score nine points. It is terrifying rooting against him. However, Julius Randle, we need Julius Randle to be Julius Randle. Like, he was Julius Randle all season long. He's the most improved player. We need him in the playoffs, and he just has not stepped up yet. We need him to do what he did all season long in the playoffs. I mean, look, Perk, amongst 50 uh, players with 50 or more field goal attempts, Randall's 24% shooting is the worst all time. Tibbs described it to us as that they have two and a half guys on, on Julius Randall. And Nate McMillan told me that their, their, their game plan is to basically guard, guard him like a guard, make sure that he doesn't yeah. get rhythm in his dribble. What are you noticing about why Julius hasn't been himself in this series? Well, I mean, this is his first time having to experience this type of thing, right? And, it, and and this is the playoffs where you have to make others beat you. You cannot allow Julius Randle to put up 40, right? You, we have to remember, the in the regular season, Julius Randle put up two 40-piece wing dinners on the Atlanta Hawks in, in, when they played them this year. So you have to make others guy, other guys beat you. And this is the difference between him and... And Trey Young, Trey Young has been seeing these type of defenses all his life. Like he's seen his defense in college, where they were running boxing ones on him. He have seen triple and double teams in the regular season, so it's nothing new to him. This is just a growing and learning experience for Julius Randle this postseason. But look, at the end of the day, if the Knicks lose, they still were a hell of a story. And no one should be talking down on them or discrediting Julius Randle for what he done, even bringing life back to New York City. Yeah, I mean, speaking of good stories, Derrick Rose has been a great story this season, but um, he can't do it all. And so the Knicks are really hoping that uh, they get more, not just from Julius, but also R.J. Barrett. Uh, they just couldn't hit anything last night. So we'll see what, the, what what happens tomorrow afternoon. Before we move on to John, the Grizzlies, uh, Massachusetts lifted their COVID restrictions today. So the Celtics are expecting a near full capacity crowd at TD Garden tomorrow for game four. Perk, you giving them any shot to tie this one up? I know you're not giving them a shot to win it, but you're giving them a shot to tie this one up. I am. I am. And, and look, the, the Celtics are playing with confidence. And to be honest, they actually had a little confidence throughout this series, although in game two they got beat pretty bad. But if we remember in game one, they came out firing. And Jason Tatum did what Jason Tatum needs to do. Not play like he's six foot four, but play like he's six nine. And he got to the paint. He got to the free throw line. He attacked all night. He was in his bag last night. They tried to put Kyrie on, uh, Irving on him. He abused him, took him to the paint. Same with Kevin Durant. They tried to put him on him. He was just in his rhythm. Tristan Thompson did his thing. Marcus Smart did his thing. Look, it's going to be rocking in the garden, okay? It's going to be rocking. I'm telling you this right now. Kyrie, look, Kyrie looks like he's shook. He don't, he, don't, he don't know what to do. And he think 5,000 fans had them shook last night. 
Just wait until they have 18,000 in there on Sunday. I just want more Deuce content. So if that means the Celtics have to win, 